Hello, so in this next series of videos, we've got four videos where I'm going to be talking through flat mould, well, silicon flat mould applications with you and also making them. The first video is going to cover sculpting, the second video is going to cover the actual preparing and moulding of the piece. In the third video, we will be running the piece and actually making the silicon appliance. And then in our final video, number four, we're going to be applying the piece that we make as well. So as you can see in front of me, I've just got a few steps that I'm going to be going through in these four videos. We're going to be literally taking some uh, chevron all the way through the stages of sculpting, preparing your mould with your flashing and your wall. We're going to be then running the mould and we're going to be using Key 22 to make our flat moulds with today. And then we're going to actually run our mould with some silicon and cat plastic. And then our fourth video will show you the application of the makeup. The product that I'm using is Siobhan. This is a sulfur-free NSP non-sulfurated plastiline um, clay. It's an oil-based clay. Um, I'm using the NSP that's non non-sulfurated because I'm going to be running my mould with silicon. And you, if you've got a sulfurated clay, if you've got sulfur in your clay, then that can inhibit the curing of your silicon. So you want to make sure the clay you're using is sulfur-free. Um, the Chavant comes in soft, medium, and hard. So if you're quite new to this, the softer one is easier to use, but as you work your way up, they do get harder, but they also retain your detail better as well. So you'll get better results from the harder one, even though it's a bit harder to work with. And um, with your softer clay, it's easier to work with, but might not, not necessarily get the best results when it comes to keeping capturing your detail. Um, so it's one of those things that have got advantages and disadvantages with them. Um, and as you work with them, you will figure out which one you prefer to use. I'm going to be using the medium clay today. Okay, so first I'm just going to show you some sculpting tools that I like to use. I've got some wooden tools here that are in various different shapes and sizes. There's one with a bit of loop on, I've got some with curves, some with points, um, some with striator edges as well. So you can go through, this is really good for carving into your clay. And then I've got some, and then I've just got some different tools for creating different shapes in within the clay. And then here are some rubber tools, which are not necessarily great for using with the plastilines, but really good for using in wet clay as well. You can use them a little bit just to soften into some of your detailing, but they are really good for working with wet clay. I do have some metal dental tools as well, similar to like the wooden ones. They come with different shapes, um, different shapes on the heads as well. I use some nail dotting tools, which are good for doing little paw work, bits of skin texturing. I've also got some smaller loop tools, again with different variety of heads on them, which are great for going in and doing, removing parts of your clay or doing some fine detail work. Again, they come in lots of different shapes. And then there's a few other tools that I have. So this is a binder tool, which is good for blending in pieces of your Chavon and good for softening some of your lines a little bit as well. You can also use this for doing a wrinkle texture or a skin texture. I also like to keep a few brushes in my kit. So I use a toothbrush again, which is good. It's good for going in and kind of buffing into your Chavon, but also if you use a hairdryer or if you use um, a blowtorch on there and just let it harden up a little bit. You can actually go in and create a bit of a line and wrinkle texture, skin texture in there as well. I also sometimes like to use my black stipple sponge, again, for adding some texture. You can soften the clay a little bit before you do this, or you can just go over and that'll create a little bit of a skin texture over your work. Some other tools that you can use are also things like brushes from hardware stores, just for creating different textures 
And you can also get things like stamp tools or rollers, which already have a pattern already in there. You can get them from everything from skin um, textures to paws to um, scales. There's lots of different ones out there on the market. And this just basically creates a gen generic texture um, on the clay. Even if I don't often use um, stent them the stampers but if I do use them I always still like to go over and do some hand texturing as well to make it look more organic and then another thing I do like to use as you'll see when you are sculpting you end up with some little balls of excess clay rolling off so just to get rid of those I use a little bit of talc on a brush at the end of my sculpting just to make sure my work's really clean and remove any of those balls of clay that have rolled off. So next I'm going to start sculpting the wound. So I've just applied my chevron to my tile and I'm just pressing those edges down. And I'm going to create a wound. So always make sure whenever you're sculpting something, you always have reference pictures as well. And so I've got my wound there and I'm just going to use my loop tools to then carve into it. And then I'm going to take them, remove the middle to give it some depth. I always like to, when I'm sculpting, just have a little ball of clay at the side where I can keep putting my excess, just to keep things nice and tidy. So I'm just going to use my tool and you can create a bit of a muscly texture in within the wound, like this. But to soften those lines, what you can also do is you can just go in with a sheet of plastic and when you go into those lines, they won't be as hard. It'll just help to soften them. So I'm just gonna make some of the edges of the wound jagged as well. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave the wound as it is for now, and I'm just going to go around and do the edges of my sculpt. Now I've just gone around and taken some of that edging down. I'm going to use my finger just to blend those edges out to make sure that there's no step in them. You want to make sure that your edges are nice and smooth, smooth down to where you're sculpting to make sure that you don't have any steps in your prosthetic as well. I roughly have the shape that I'm going to be moulding. I'm just going to go back into my wound and add some more detail in there. So I'm just going to add some. Um, I'm just going to add some tissuey areas, and I'm just adding some really small balls of clay in there. And you can also build into this to add some fatty tissue as well. And I'm just going to take one of my small tools to blend this in. And 
and then I'm just going back to my plastic just so I can add a bit more detail into the wound so once I'm happy with my wound I'm going to then come to the edges and we're going to work on these edges a little bit more so I'm just going to smooth them out So once I've done that edge, I'm just going to go in and start adding some skin texture to it. I'm just going to use some wire, um, some brushes to start off with and I'm going to go in a bit of like a cross hatch motion to add in, to add in some of the skin texture. This also helps to mattify it, so whilst I've been blending my edges, the chevants come up really smooth and polished. Uh, we don't want that because when we apply that onto the makeup it'll give us a really plasticky shiny fake looking effect we want to add the skin texture in there because this helps to mattify the sculpt and the appliance so it looks more like skin texture you can go in as well and just add a few pores If you find as you're doing any of these steps, you make a mistake, it doesn't matter because you can just go back over it. If you take too much, remove too much of your clay, you can just add more. If you do a, the texture in and you don't like it, you can just smooth it back out again and start again. And I'm just going to go back over with my brush and this will just soften some of that pore texture. Now what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of powder on my brush and just use this to help remove any excess clay that I don't want. These are usually when I've been adding in my texture, little balls of clay that have come up. So I'm just going to clean up this edge here. I'm just using cotton pad and some IPA just to remove the clay. So this is all the excess clay that we don't need in the mould. Now if I'd have, I'm going to show you one that I made earlier so you can see the finished product.